We've already identified what enantiomers are, and we've had some practice using wedge dash drawings so we can represent enantiomers on a two-dimensional piece of paper. What we want to do now is learn a system to distinguish between the two different enantiomers. The name of this system is the RS system. The R stands for rectus or right, and the S stands for sinister, which is another word for left. In order to distinguish between the R and S enantiomers, we first have to rank the groups on the asymmetric center based on priority. This will be similar to the priority system we use to identify E and Z alkenes. A 1 is the highest priority, and a 4 is considered the lowest priority. Once we've ranked the groups on the asymmetric center, we want to orient the molecule so that the lowest priority group, the number 4 priority, is pointing away from you. Once you've done this, if you go from 1 to 2 in a clockwise direction, or to the right, we would indicate that that is the R enantiomer. However, if going from 1 to 2 to 3 is in a counterclockwise direction, or to the left, we would indicate that this is the S enantiomer. What would you do if the molecule as drawn does not have the lowest group, the number 4 priority group, pointed away from you? If that's the case, you can switch the low priority group, number 4, with the group that is currently pointed away. When you switch two groups on an asymmetric center, you're essentially switching it to the other configuration, to the other enantiomer. Now that you've switched the lowest priority group and the group pointing away from you, if you go from 1 to 2 in a clockwise direction, the new molecule is R, which means that the original molecule was the S enantiomer. However, if going from 1 to 2 to 3 in a counterclockwise direction, that means the new molecule, after switching the two groups, is an S enantiomer, and therefore the original enantiomer was the R configuration. Now that we've learned the steps used to identify the RS configuration of molecules, let's apply those steps to these two molecules. The first step is to assign priorities to each of the groups attached to the asymmetric center. A 1 will be given to the highest priority, and a 4 will be given to the lowest priority. In this case, bromine has the highest atomic number, so bromine will be priority number one. Hydrogen with the lowest priority because it's atomic number one. Of the other two groups, we have a methyl and an ethyl. This carbon has three hydrogens, whereas this carbon has two hydrogens and another carbon. The presence of this second carbon instead of a third hydrogen means that the ethyl is the second highest priority. Now that we've assigned priorities, we can see if the lowest priority, in this case the hydrogen, is pointed away from us. Recall with the wedge dash drawings that the dashed bond is pointed away from the viewer. The hydrogen, however, is even with the plane of the paper. Since the hydrogen, the number four priority, is not pointed away from us, we can switch those two groups, the hydrogen and the ethyl group, so that the hydrogen will be pointed away from us. Now that the hydrogen is pointed away from us, we can see which direction we need to go from priority 1 to 2 to 3. In this case, that direction is counterclockwise. That indicates that this enantiomer is in the S configuration. However, since we switched the hydrogen and the ethyl group, from the initial compound, if the new compound is in its S configuration, the original compound as the enantiomer must be in its R configuration. 
You should now take a few minutes to see if you can identify the configuration of the second molecule. After you do that, start the video again and see if you got the right answer. All of the molecules we've seen so far have had only one asymmetric center. But what happens when you have more than one asymmetric center in a compound? Any compound with n asymmetric centers will have a maximum of 2 to the n stereoisomers. Let's look at these four molecules, which are all related to each other. The first two each have two asymmetric centers and if you look carefully at them, it looks like they're mirror images of each other. However, they are non-superimposable mirror images. In that situation, we would say that these two molecules are enantiomers of each other. In the second two molecules, molecules number three and four, they also look like mirror images of each other. Since they're mirror images and they're non-superimposable, these two molecules are also enantiomers of each other. However, how are molecules 1 and 3 related to each other, and how are molecules 2 and 4 related to each other? Since molecules 1 and 3 are not mirror images of each other, that means that molecules 1 and 3 are diastereomers. Molecules 2 and 4 are also not mirror images of each other. So therefore, molecules 2 and 4 are also diastereomers. When we have more than one asymmetric center, the enantiomers will have both asymmetric centers with opposite configurations. Diastereomers, on the other hand, will have one asymmetric center with opposite configurations and one asymmetric center with the same configuration. From a chemical standpoint, diastereomers are going to have different physical and chemical properties from each other. Enantiomers, on the other hand, are generally going to have the same physical and chemical properties as long as these properties are not based on having a chiral center. We've already said that enantiomers will have the same chemical and physical properties in achiral environments. However, there are situations where enantiomers will differ in their interactions. For example, enantiomers will differ in how they interact with plain polarized light. Specifically, they will rotate light in opposite directions. We say that these kinds of compounds are optically active. If one enantiomer rotates plane polarized light in a clockwise direction, we say that compound is dextrorotatory and it's designated thus with a plus sign. If a compound rotates plane polarized light in a counterclockwise direction, we say that compound is levorotatory and we designate that with a minus sign. You should be careful to remember that the plus and minus signs for the dire direction that plane polarized light is rotated is not directly related to the structural configurations indicated by the R and S designations. Plus and minus indications are determined with a polarimeter, a type of instrument that you could find in lab. The R and S designations are determined based on their structural features. However, if a compound is R and minus designated, its enantiomer will be S plus designated. If we have a mixture that has equal amounts of two enantiomers, we say that is a racemic mixture. 
That means that since there are equal amounts of each enantiomer, the mixture of these two compounds is optically inactive.